Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at biofuels for your A-level chemistry. They claim that they are carbon neutral, all of the equations and reactions that are involved in this. Once you've finished doing this video, if you want to make sure your recall of everything is good enough for a vision, then over on my website there are loads of completely free questions, loads of completely free retrieval questions you can do after this video or after this lesson to make sure everything's in there. Ethanol can be used as a biofuel. Traditional fuels such as petrol or diesel come from crude oil. And crude oil is a finite resource, meaning we are going to run out of it eventually. If you think about the structure of ethanol, it has oxygen within it. So an engine burning ethanol will burn more efficiently, reducing air pollution. Our formula for ethanol is C2H6O, and here it is drawn here. This ethanol we get from the fermentation of glucose from cane sugar. There are several chemical processes involved in this. We start off with photosynthesis, which is probably a bit more biology than chemistry, but we need the equation for it to understand all of the processes involved. 6CO2 plus 6H2O is converted into glucose C6H12O6 plus 6O2, 6 oxygens. Then we have the fermentation process, the fermentation of sugarcane to produce the ethanol. I'm going to try and keep everything lined up here so it's easier for you to follow. We have our glucose C6H12O6. It is fermented into ethanol, two ethanols, 2C2H5OH plus two carbon dioxides. Then we have the combustion of ethanol. This is the part that actually takes place in the engine. So this is actually being used as a biofuel. 2C2H5OH plus 6O2 is burnt to give us 6H2O plus 4CO2. These are all of the different equations involved in going from photosynthesis to the combustion of ethanol using ethanol as a biofuel. During photosynthesis, we have carbon taken in from the atmosphere. The process uses, takes in, six carbon dioxides from the atmosphere. In fermentation, the production of the ethanol, two carbon dioxides are released as a waste product. In combustion, in the use of the bioethanol, we have the release of more carbon dioxide. So we have six carbons, six carbon dioxide going in. This is converted to six carbons in glucose. Over this part, we are going to be following the carbons. We have six carbons in glucose, and they are converted into two two-carbon ethanols, so that's four carbons in total, and two carbon dioxides. That is two carbons that are released. We have our two ethanols, four carbons in total, and then from that, we have four carbons in the form of carbon dioxide being released. So we have six carbons going into this process via photosynthesis. Four carbons are following the process through as the ethanol and two carbons are lost during fermentation. Two carbons are released as carbon dioxide. The four carbons in ethanol go on to combustion and then four are released in carbon dioxide. So this reaction is called a carbon neutral reaction. However, that is not the whole story. The equations will show us that there is no net change in carbon. This is because from the start to the end, if you just look at the equations, there is no change in the number of carbons involved. There is no change in CO2 levels. It is not adding any extra carbon to the atmosphere. However, that is not the whole story. 
The sugar cane that is fermented needs to be planted, it needs to be watered, it needs to be looked after by farmers. And eventually it needs to be harvested. All of these processes are probably going to be done by tractors, by farm machinery. And farm machinery use fuels. Probably the petrol that the bioethanol is trying to replace. The ethanol that is produced by fermentation is not pure enough to actually be used as a biofuel. So it needs to be distilled and energy is needed for this distillation. I'm going to use a, a term from chemistry, GCSE here, a life cycle assessment. If you think of the whole life of going from sugarcane, going from carbon dioxide, all of the way to the combustion of the ethanol, if we think about the energy usage and the carbon dioxide released at every single stage, including the transporting of the sugarcane, including the distillation of the ethanol, including all of the tractors used for watering and planting the sugarcane, is this really a carbon neutral process or do all of these other things actually release carbon into the atmosphere as well? The other thing we need to take into consideration when we are thinking at ethanol as a biofuel, and if it's ethical to actually use this, is land uses. This is part of the Amazon rainforest, and you can see there is a very unnatural line drawn here. On one side, we have the rainforest, and touching on Baji, the amazing biodiversity that is found within there. On the other side, we have a field that is growing one single crop. It is not biodiverse in any way at all. Any form of large scale intensive farming will reduce habitats and biodiversity. Here we can see that deforestation has taken place so that they can grow a crop in an apparently carbon neutral process. This is not very carbon neutral. The land here is used for growing a crop that could be used to feed people. It's growing sugarcane. In a world where children go to bed hungry and people starve to death every single day, is it ethical to take crops that could be used for food and to use them for bioethanol? Also, the land could be used for growing other crops such as wheat, which could feed more people. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.